Shalom, friends, and welcome to the Church at Lion of Judah Sunday, May 12th service. This week, Pastor Matthew Hartman brings us this very special Mother's Day message titled, No Greater Love. We hope this message finds you well and continues to bless you throughout the week. If you'd like to attend a service, we're at 5732 Douglas Road in Toledo, Ohio. Service times are Sunday, 1030 a.m. and Friday at 7 p.m. If you'd like to partner with us in support of our ministry and world outreach, head over to www.lionofjudatoledo.org and click the Donate button. Thanks for joining us today. Now on to the message. And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, no greater love, right? The Bible says. We're going to read that verse here in a moment. Um, I, want to, I want to share a, a story. A, well, it was actually a video that I watched about a mother. And um, again, normally I don't do, uh, you know, unless it's a holy day from the Lord. I don't normally do a special message geared towards, uh, a, you know, a holiday. But your moms are definitely worth it. Not that you're not worth it. It's just not my normal style or, or the way that I walk. But the Lord is really impressing on my heart um, to encourage you and to you know and strengthen you um, with the word. So I pray. I'm praying, and it's been my prayer all week that as I share today, that um, just a portion and a part of it would be from God's heart from his mouth to yours and it would encourage you and strengthen you because I know if it's just if just one word that I utter is actually from God and not from me I know that it will transform you strengthen you and build you up so I'm praying that's my prayer today is uh, that something I share uh, today would be from the Lord and it would because it's so easy for us to get up here and say I have a word from the Lord but I don't want to just flippantly say things like that I have some words out of the Lord's word that I'm going to share for sure. But, um, yeah, I pray that uh, that part of it, I want to approach uh, saying things like that with integrity and humility. Because that's a big statement as I'm speaking for God. That's a big statement. In the Old Testament, if you made that statement, I'm speaking for God, and you weren't, it was punishable by death. Praise God that we're not we're a, we're we're in a different level of grace today, right? Thank you, Lord, for your different level of grace. That grace came through the law, but grace upon grace came through Yeshua Hamashiach through Jesus Christ, right? Thank you for that. But I watched this video back to where I was at. I watched this video about this lady, and she was in the UK. And uh, she was a mother of two. She had two sons. And uh, she, she became pregnant again. And she became pregnant with a daughter. And she was really excited to be able to mother a daughter. I can imagine, you know. Um, just like a father would be excited if he had a... I have a cousin. He had five daughters. And the reason he had five daughters is because he wanted a son. So he kept, you know. And then after the fifth daughter, he said, okay, okay, this is... You know, this is enough. Um, so I can imagine a mother that has two sons would probably be very excited to have a daughter. And this lady, she was. So she went in for a routine uh, checkup, pregnancy checkup, during her pregnancy and, and discovered that she had cancer. And that's got to be really challenging, right? And the type of cancer that she had was very treatable, but it was a really aggressive treatment um, that was effective, and it would it would um, cause her to lose the baby. So she made this choice because, you know, she, she said, you know, if it was just me or the child, of course the child. But she had two other sons already. You know, so she had this whole dynamic that she had to consider. So she took a less aggressive form of treatment that wouldn't damage the baby in hopes that it would... Um, by some time that she would be able to have the child and then maybe have the more aggressive form of treatment and, and you know, experience remission and, and uh, you know, the cancer would be cured. Uh, unfortunately, as she was engaging in the less aggressive form of treatment, it wasn't working and her cancer was growing. And um, so she was, again, left with a choice. Uh, her baby, I think, was around six months old in the womb. Uh, and they, they shared with her that it's very viable to 
to be able to remove the, the child from the womb. And um, they're, the success rate of those children growing and living was really high, uh, you know. So, so she made the choice, again, with her children in mind, you know, her two sons in mind, to have the child, you know, C-section, have it premature, and that she would be able to, uh, you know, engage in the more aggressive treatment and be there for her sons, be there for her daughter. And unfortunately, after a week, the daughter didn't make it. And um, she, she received the more aggressive treatment and was able to be there for her sons. And I know that's kind of a bummer of the story, right? Because you want to hear how the daughter made it. I mean, the beautiful thing is, is we know where the child, right? The innocent child, we know where the child is. The child's with the Lord, right? Um, the mom is now there for her, for her children. But the point, and the reason I wanted to share that particular story is, is I, that, that to me like sums up a mother's life and all the choices that it, that it would seem like from the outside, the continual choices that mothers have to make in order to do what's best for their children. And I truly think that, uh, you know, uh, that there's no greater example of a sacrificial life and the life that we've been called to as followers of Jesus than the life of a mother. I'm talking about healthy mothers that are loving their children and caring for them because I know we're in a fallen, broken world and that isn't always happening. But I'm talking about healthy mothers that love their children and make honest, good choices, whether they're followers or not of Jesus, right? Like I, I said a moment ago, the reality is, is that we're all created in His image. So that's why we see goodness in people that aren't believers of Jesus is because even though they don't know it, they're created in God's image. So good, healthy mothers, I think, there isn't a much greater example of a, a sacrificial life that's lived for another. Would you agree with that? I know the moms in here are like, yeah, you've laid it down, right? I mean, on the opposite end of that, how many times the, these young ladies or, or women that have abortions claim that they're my life will be over. They know. They know, and it's not necessarily true, but they're in college and they're, they're, they're afraid that their career will end or they won't get their degree and move forward to the dreams they have to dream. And I mean, that kind of opposite ends of reality lets you know how sacrificial a mother's life is. I mean, even just the very premise of childbirth, right, is God is using your bodies, ladies, to produce life. That is amazing. Every time you ask a pregnant lady how they're doing, well, not every time, but most, a lot of the young pregnant women that I know, how you doing? I'm tired. Yeah, I'm tired. How you doing? I'm tired. And um, so, like, God is using your bodies to create life. And I mean, just from that very basic foundation of that reality and truth, a mother's life is sacrificial, right? You end up having, you ladies know, you'll end up having like deficiencies and, and chemicals and different things in your bodies that you have to take supplements and all these things because like you're literally giving yourself away. So I want to talk about that. I want to, I just want to, I will bless you. And uh, this is what Yeshua said. If we could stand for this for this word for a moment. Okay, Cassie. Click me one forward. Well, you might have to do it. I don't know what's happening. Okay, anyways. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. This is what Yeshua said. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life or her life for his friends or her friends. Moms, I know you are laying down your lives daily, making choices, making decisions that are for the good of your children, and you love them, and you want the best for them, and you are sacrificing your life and laying it down. I mean, we hear story after story, right, of mothers that literally will put themselves in harm's way, in danger, lose their lives for their children. 
again, I'm going to say it, there is no greater example of a sacrificial life than a healthy mother who loves their children. Please be seated. Thank you. Mothers' lives aren't their own. They're truly an example of self-denial. And this is what Yeshua said. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I know you're losing your lives oftentimes and your children. But I want to encourage you because you're finding your life in them. I was just reading in the book of Ecclesiastes and, and Solomon's talking about how everything is in vain, right? All of these things are vain. But what you're doing, pouring into your children, isn't vain. You are building a legacy and a life to come. And I want you to know that every seed that you're sowing, be encouraged. You may not see the fruit of it. I'm going to share with you, my mother did not see the fruit of the seeds that she sowed in me. When I was five years old, drawing this picture, writing, Jesus is the best. And after, you know, years of teenagehood and growing up without my father and all this stuff, I went very astray, rejected the gospel and rejected Jesus. She never, never wavered, never moved. And she would be absolutely blown away by the reality of where I'm at today. So I want to encourage you to just keep giving your life away and know as you're doing that, you're finding your life. You're sowing your life into your children and it's going to continue to grow. You're building a legacy and it's, that, that's what it's about. It's, a, it's about a legacy, right? And I mean, me, I don't have any natural children, Tabitha and I. But I'm very blessed by the Lord to be in this situation, in this position that I can sow into others that I can sow into Noah, who's leading the youth group, and other people, and that I can set a legacy in that. Moms, if, you know, maybe you're not a natural mother. My wife isn't a natural mother, but she has the opportunity to sow and to give her life away. And, to, and in that, she finds it. I think of what Dr. Tom shared. I heard this story the other day. We've all heard of a runner's high, right? Where, like, you, you're so, you run for so long, these runners, that's what keeps them going. They run and run and run, and they get this high from it. And it, it, it inspires them to continue to run and to run the next time. But there's also this thing called a giver's high. And I've experienced it a lot, and it keeps me going, right? In that giving, I find my life. I feel so alive when we're on the streets. And I know you mothers feel the same thing when you're giving to your children sometimes. Probably not all the time. But I just want to encourage you, keep pressing in, keep sowing seeds, and know that you're making a difference. And Jesus said, you're doing what he's asked you to do. You're laying your life down. You're following him. You're nurturing and caring. I love this. One of the first things, right? Moses says, God, show me your glory. God tells him, you can't see my face, Moses, but hide in this rock, and I'm going to make my all of my goodness, I'm going to make my name pass by you. And he reveals to Moses all of his goodness and his name. And the very first thing he says, moms, it's I am Rahum. I am compassionate. It's a feminine word, and it, it has the notation, the, the, it has the picture of a mother's womb. So the very first thing that God reveals about who he is is that he's like compassionate, like a mother's womb is that's carrying a child. You're good. You're amazing. Keep going. Keep pressing in. Jesus said this, Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Again, that, that is the life of a mother. I can't tell you how many times my mom, I look back on it, she, did, she wasn't concerned for herself. She was concerned for me. Two years old, I lived in Texas. And I had an older brother that was in Ohio, and uh, my mother and, and father moved to Texas for work. My older brother lived with his real father, and then there was a big issues that was developing in, in his father's life. So I know it's crazy, but you, you'll track with me. 
So my mom wanted to come back and get my brother, and she hadn't seen her parents in you know over a year and her family. So we took a Greyhound bus from Texas. She brought me with her, and I don't know if you guys know how long it takes a, a Greyhound bus to get from Texas to Ohio. It's a really long time. It's multiple days. So my real father gave her a certain amount of money, and in that certain amount of money, it wasn't enough for both of us to eat. So my mother went without eating for a couple of few days to make sure that I had what I needed, to make sure that I was cared for. And I know you moms have made that same choice over and over again. Michelle shared with me being a young, you know, single mother, having three children, having to work, having to walk them through the roughest neighborhoods, standing at the bus stops for hours, taking care of them. And I'm just thankful for you healthy moms that are, that are willing to lay it all down, that are willing to, to love your children and do that. You're truly an example of Jesus Christ and what it is to be a follower of Jesus. So I just again want to encourage you and bless you in what you're doing. Mothers are the, are, there's no greater example of a sacrificial life, of a life sacrificed, uh, you know, as we're called to be believers and followers of Jesus, than the life of a mother, a healthy mother. Again, again, I know that we're in a fallen world and not all mothers are healthy. But a healthy mother, there's no, no greater, no greater um, picture of health and life. Listen, I want to tell you mothers, because I know that some of you, again, right, and talking about the abortion thing, some of these ladies are aborting their children because they think they have to give up their career. They have to give up this grand picture and view of what they had in their mind. But listen, ladies, you are discipling the nations when you're discipling your children. When you're raising your children under the gospel, under the reality of Jesus, when you're pouring that into them, even if you can't see it and you don't know it, I want you to hear me. You are discipling the nations. Your children are the nations of the world, and they're reaching the nations. I was really blessed to um, attend the, the National Day of Prayer, uh, a dinner, the NWO, Northwest Ohio organization here in, in town, uh, last Thursday. And there were like a, a couple of amazing, amazing men that were there. For one, Elder Sheila, who used to be an elder here for many years, her son was given an award, and I know he has a, an adopted daughter, and just an amazing, impactful man of God, and, uh, you know, so I just think that he now works for the YMCA in Indianapolis, and he is, like, touching so many lives, and this mother, Sheila, had poured into him for all these years, trained him in the way she could go. And by her, you know, by God's grace, she gets to see the fruit of it. And I know not all of you are seeing the fruit of it. You've been sowing seeds. You've been praying. And I just want to encourage you. I want you to know that you're doing it, that you're doing the Great Commission. You're doing what Jesus told you to do. Keep going. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. So whether you see it or not, just know that you're making a difference. Just keep pouring into your children. Just keep sharing Jesus with them. Just keep sharing the gospel with them. Keep being that example of a sacrificial life. Just keep loving them unconditionally. I'm not talking about not drawing lines or speaking the truth. Sometimes speaking the truth is love. But I just want to encourage you, keep pressing in and know that you are following what Jesus said. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, and you're doing it. You're doing it. My mother, again, sowed seeds into me, didn't know it. She'd be, I have to share this story with you. So I, I worked for Discovering the Jewish Jesus for almost eight years, and I, um, when my mother was alive, Tabitha and I, we, we paid for her a little apartment and uh, she had direct TV, direct TV in her apartment. We went over to visit her one day. And I walk in and on her television is this guy in this rainbow outfit with this rainbow hat on. And I'm like, what are you watching? I'm not, hear me, I'm not a Christian by any means at all. And I'm like, what are you watching? And she said, this is this Jewish rabbi that loves Jesus. And he, he's an amazing preacher. And I'm like, okay, whatever. 
and I, I move on. Well, I, I forgot about that moment. And then about four years into my employment at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, I was teaching a Hebraics Roots class. So I wanted some of, his, some of Rabbi Schneider's old teachings. I went down into the basement to dig through some old dusty copies of DVDs down there. And I find this, I find this DVD that has Rabbi Schneider on the cover of it and a rainbow outfit with this rainbow hat on. And I'm like, I, it, suddenly I remembered that moment so my mother didn't get to see the fruit. That's my point, is I want to encourage you. My mother didn't get to see the fruit, but I got to work for Discovering the Jewish Jesus for almost eight years. I traveled with Rabbi Schneider to, to nations in Africa, seen thousands of people come to the gospel, seen, seen thousands of people respond to Jesus, seen thousands of people set free, be healed. So I just want to encourage you mothers. Don't be discouraged if you don't see the fruit of your labors right now. Just keep moving forward. Just keep sowing the seeds. Just keep discipling your children. Just keep loving them and know that God is working, that he's moving. You're following the Great Commission. You're doing what you've been commanded to do. And there's a blessing for you. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You're fulfilling the commission. Your children are the nations. Your children are the nations. Think about this. How many people in here are Jewish? Raise your hands. Not one hand shot up today. Your children are the nations. I mean, look around the room and I see different denominations. You know, Magali's daughter is here representing her from, you know, she, she's Hispanic. We've got uh, Jovelin, you know, she, she's from the Philippines. I mean, on and on and on. You know, the, the, we, we are the nations. You are discipling the nations. Be encouraged. Do not be discouraged. You're sowing seeds and the seeds matter. I love this. Paul says, for I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. Mothers, grandmothers, you are sowing seeds. Look, this is Paul talking to Timothy. His beloved son in the Lord who he was raising up and left as the pastor of Ephesus. You know, I went, like I said, I went astray for a long time. And then finally, I decided, well, finally the Lord, because I, I didn't decide, right? Nobody comes to the Father unless he draws them. God decided it was time for him to draw me to himself. My mother had laid a foundation and sowed seeds into me. So when, when I felt the urging to seek God, guess where I went? I started looking at Jesus. I went to the Bible. I went to the scriptures. I went to the one place that I knew to look for God. The one place that was the, the, the seeds that were sown in me. So mothers, grandmothers keep sowing seeds. Mother-in-laws keep sowing seeds. I'm telling you. You're making a difference. You're impacting the world. My, my Tavza's grandmother, we, we were blessed to have her come to our wedding. Um, didn't know she was going to because she had cancer and lived in Texas. And they surprised us and brought her to our wedding. And this, this lady, she loved Jesus. And she was very bold about it. And every single time that Tavitha and I would talk to her, it was, you know, have you thought about Jesus? What's going? You know, where where are you at with Jesus? What's going? Have you read your Bible? I mean, honest, honest, and honest. When she found out that we moved by, into Toledo, guys, this is crazy, right? Listen to this. So when she found out that we moved into Toledo, she told Tabitha, "You guys need to go to church." And we're like, "Ah." Eh. She said, "There's this church in Toledo that's pastored by this rabbi who's on TV who I watch, and it's it's in Toledo. It's right by you." Uh, this is before I know who Rabbi Schneider is or see the TV program. So when we actually, I, I find Discover the Jewish Jesus and we start coming here, it's like, man, this is crazy. So I want to I want to encourage you, the seeds, they matter. You're sowing them. They matter. And God is the one who gives increase. Someone else might water the seed. Like Tabitha's grandmother, she, does, she didn't get to see the fruit. 
My mother didn't get to see the fruit. But the seeds they sowed, I'm telling you, they were impactful, powerful, and the fruit is here. And the fruit has remained. And I pray that it continues to increase. And I pray that the impact that they sowed into us will continue to impact and sow into others. And on and on and on, right? It is. I don't have to pray that it's happening because it's happening. So I just, again, I want to encourage you, mothers. I want to bless you and say what you're doing matters. You're sowing seeds and they are profitable whether you see them or not. You're following the Great Commission. You're discipling the nations. Just keep pressing on. Just keep going. Don't weary in doing good. Just keep sowing seeds. Just keep moving forward. Keep doing what you know to do. And, and don't be discouraged. Don't let what you don't see affect what you know is truth. These are incorruptible seeds that you're sowing. They can't, they, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're forever, ever alive. And just know that they're good and that they're effective. I think of Paul. He said this, what then is Apollos and what is Paul? Servants through whom you believe even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one. I planted and Apollos watered. So maybe you're planting, and then somebody else is going to water the seed that you've been planting. Just keep praying for your children. Just keep planting. Don't worry about it. Maybe you're watering someone else's seed that they planted. It's God who gives the increase. And know that he'll give the increase. Here's a couple amazing prayers I want to give to you. Pray, like if you're worried about where your children's heart's at, maybe you sowed seeds into them, maybe they've confessed the Lord, but they're not really walking. Ask God to give them hunger and thirst for his righteousness. Hunger and thirst for God is a gift. That's a good prayer to pray for your children. Even if your children are following the Lord, ask God to give them a hunger and thirst for his righteousness. Maybe your children haven't come and you've been sowing the seeds. They haven't come to the Lord. Ask the Father to draw them. Nobody comes to the Father unless he draws them. So ask him to draw them. Ask him to make them hungry. Ask him to send somebody to water the seeds that you've sown. Right? Unfortunately, as Yeshua said, the prophet is without honor in their own house. Unfortunately, my mother tried to, to, as I was older, you know, touch me and, and share the gospel with me and share Jesus with me. And, and I was hardened to it. I couldn't, I, I was too close to my mom. I knew the deficiencies in her life and the situations that she had been in and, you know, the stumbles and fumbles in her life. And I couldn't see it. I asked God to send somebody to water. Somebody that might be able to reach them where you can't reach them. But above all things, don't weary in doing good. Just keep sowing. Just keep pressing in. Paul says, so then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God who causes the growth. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward according to his labor. Listen, keep sowing, and you are going to receive a reward according to your labor. You are storing up treasures in heaven, just like this painting, right? Just listen and keep doing what God's telling you to do. Don't be discouraged. Don't be let down when things don't go the way you think they're supposed to. Just keep going. Just keep praying. Ask God to send a waterer. Ask him for an increase. Ask him to give them hunger and thirst for the righteousness, for his righteousness. Just keep pressing. Don't get discouraged. And know that God... Is, is, is working. It says, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. You're working with God when you're doing it. You're fulfilling the Great Commission. You're sowing seeds and they matter. Again, there is no greater life. I mean, I think of, you know, some dear, a dear, a dear sister of mine, you know, had to recently share something very challenging with one of their children and it caused a rift. But man, it's so much better to lay down the truth to sow the seeds of truth than it is to nurture a seed of a lie. So sometimes, mom, we have to be, we have to be uh, sturdy and steady, unshakable and unmovable in our faith. And I just want to encourage you when you are, it's going to matter. It's going to matter. One day they're going to stand, it's going to hit them 
like a ton of bricks. And they're going to look back and go, my goodness. I've done it a thousand times with my mother. I'm like, how hard-headed was I? I can't believe I couldn't see it. I can't believe I didn't believe it. It's so obvious. But just keep pressing, moms, grandmothers. Just keep moving forward. Just keep doing what you know you should do. And I promise you, God's going to give increase. And you're going to be rewarded for your efforts. There is no greater sacrificial life and example of Jesus Christ than a mother. I'm almost done. I know some of you probably got dinner at home. I pray. Dads, sons, I hope you're blessing your moms. If mine was here, I'd love to be able to bless her. But she's not. So, you know, I, I think I, I could be, though. Because I think of that mysterious scripture in Hebrews, uh, I think it's 11, right? Where it says we maybe not 11 we have this great cloud of witnesses so maybe she does see the fruit I don't know but one day she will one day she'll see the fruit I know this there, she, she, there's a reward for her in what I'm doing because she sowed the seeds into me because she laid a foundation for me because she, she told me Bible verses and parables when I was a kid she engaged in arts and crafts and activities when I was a kid that were biblical. And now listen, some of you mothers I know, you didn't do that when your kids were little. So I don't want you to be discouraged. Don't, don't regret what you didn't do when you didn't know. So don't hear what I'm sharing, you know, what I'm saying and allow it to bring condemnation upon you. You have an opportunity. Today is the day. You have an opportunity to turn it around and to begin to speak life to your children. And yeah, they're going to bring up who they remembered you being. But that's okay. That gives you an opportunity to testify, to give a testimony of how changed you are and how much God worked in you and how much the you know Jesus made you new and how you were dead and how you're now alive. How that person doesn't exist anymore. And today is a new day, and a day can be a new day for them. So don't be discouraged. Just keep, keep pressing in. And God's love through a mother is real. Just keep displaying God's love through a mother. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I told my mother, I wish I lived with my dad. I'm sure some of you divorced mothers, mothers that are split up have probably heard that a thousand times. Man, if I could have taken them all back. Because I got to live with my dad once one year. It was horrible. It wasn't, I, I never said it again. When I finally got to go back home to my mom, I never said it again. Because my dad didn't love me like my mom loved me. He's broken. That's a whole nother, whole nother message. But he didn't love me like my mom loved me. So maybe you've heard that stuff from your kids, and that's okay. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When we, when we were enemies, when we, when we didn't care about him, he still gave his only begotten son, and that whoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So just keep loving your children. Just keep being that example. Just keep speaking the truth. Just keep loving them where they're at.